Hey everybody, I'm Wendy with the Swamp Rabbit Inn and it's Wednesday at noon. Thanks for tuning in live and I have with me Will Schertz. Hey. One of the owners of Methodical Coffee. Yep, one of three. Yeah, and we love Methodical Coffee. I have this beautiful mocha. I don't know, I don't want to spill it, but it <laughs> is gorgeous and it's delicious and I already had one so I'm getting fully caffeinated <laughs> here. So thank you for caffeinating Greenville yeah. in such a beautiful way. Absolutely. Yeah, well I remember meeting you a while ago uh -huh. when you were um, a young young guy doing this vagabond barista thing. Yep, oh and, yeah. And now you have this premier gorgeous coffee shop mm -hmm. in downtown Greenville and we're gonna talk with you a little bit later about how you're expanding. Mm -hmm. But my favorite part so far of the story is Vagabond Barista, I guess, and, and how did you get started and, and how did all oh, that yeah. happen? Oh man, I love thinking about Vagabond. So it was back in um, back in high school. I was in the I well I've been from Greenville ever since I was two. So okay. I'm like a Greenville guy. I just I love it. Um, so there's your Greenville story. Yeah, I'm like I'm like <laughs> the biggest Greenville fan person that I just love it. I never want to move. And okay. so I was I was growing up here and in high school I was playing a lot of music so I um, I left I left public school. I technically had to like drop out of public school and I re-enrolled and I was doing all my schooling online. Okay. Because um, I wanted to travel around with this band that I was What do you play? Playing. What instrument? I play guitar. Okay. I have play guitar. Cool. I've been really busy with coffee lately so uh -huh. I haven't played much but uh, it's kind of what got me into coffee and so because I was traveling and when I was in town, I just, I had so much time to, to, to spare because school took no time. So I started working in coffee shops okay. and through working in coffee shops, that's when I was like, I just have to do coffee for a living. All right. You got cooked? Just yeah. from working in the coffee shop? Yeah. It was kind of like, I mean, I don't know what it was. I, I get kind of like, I get really focused on things. Okay. And, that's a good thing. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> I think I just, I don't know. There was something about the culture and. Um, usually a coffee shop job in the southeast is minimum wage job so it was still kind of like far-fetched to make a living in the coffee industry but I was like I just have to I just have to find a way to do it and so that's kind of how my one of my bosses told me you just have to be creative and so that's how Vagabond Barista started to come about okay and tell us what was Vagabond Barista well I Vagabond Barista I started when I, I started it when I was 19 and uh, I had like a week left of school or something, of high school to do, because I was just typing away online. Okay. And um, I, I needed to make a living. I needed to like, I needed to at least take some steps towards like trying to make a career out of coffee. Okay. And so I didn't necessarily have the money to build out a whole cafe and to, to hire a bunch of baristas. So I, um, I was like, well, like I'll just like take what I have, just have this brewing equipment, and I'll just go to people, and I'll go to wedding events and business meetings and schools. I remember seeing you at Mill Village Farm yeah. for like Sunday yeah. supper, which is coming up actually at the end of this month. Yep. Yeah. And and you were doing pour over mainly. Yeah, may it was all pour over. So okay. and it was it was wild. So I it's not necessarily my philosophy now, but my philosophy then, like a little while ago was um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna do pour over coffee and uh, that way people get to experience coffee being made by hand. And then I'm going to serve it in glassware, and just because, really logistically, I just I couldn't carry around milk everywhere I went. So like I didn't have really I didn't have milk or sugar, and I, it kind of put more emphasis on needing to make coffee taste as good as it can taste. And so that's kind of okay. what started. I started to be able to showcase coffee to people in a different way than some people were experiencing it before. Okay, and then I remember. Um, well, then you, then what? Then you open, how did you get from doing Vagabond Barista yeah. to what you're doing now? So I, I did Vagabond Barista, I think for about three years, and... And you went all over the world? Country. Country, all over country the country. Country with Vagabond okay. Barista, yeah, okay. we went to, we got, went up all the way up to Las Vegas, got okay. to do this whole Northeast tour all the way up to New York and New England area. Um, it was amazing. And so, yeah, we did that for about three, three years, maybe a little longer, and, in the middle of that, I I was helping a guy import coffee, and that kind of gave me a little bit of extra experience in the coffee industry. And kind of how it started is, so I, I have two business partners here from Thoughtful, yeah. uh, Marco Suarez and David Baker, yep. and I met them both separately. So um, 
I met Marco because he actually did my branding for Vagabond Barista. Okay. Somehow we crossed paths and, and he was just like, I just want, I want to help you out. And so he just helped me out. He did my branding. We became friends over time. Okay. And then I met David Baker. He moved back from Prague. He was living in Prague. He's um, doing a hostel. Yeah. He's yeah. running hotels and hostels yeah. out there. Yeah. Um, just like doing great out there. And the week he moved back, he attended a coffee tasting that I was, I was setting up. And that's how we met. We became really good friends because of that. And over time, um, we just became better and better friends, but still, Marco and David didn't know each other. They never met. Um, one day, Marco texted me, and he was like, hey, would you ever want to start a coffee shop up? And I was like, walk, I was walking down Main Street, and just, I don't even, I was probably just not doing much, but I was like, yeah, let's do it, because uh, I Why love, <laughs> yeah, you know, Vagabond Reese was going great, but it was kind of like, it, there was some, there was only so much growth you need that I scale. could do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I wanted to help other people have a living in coffee too okay. and so I was like well, let's do this and um, said we need David though because he was the he's a business operations okay. mind. so we all three met up and started Takes a chatting. team yeah yeah I've got my team Meredith is uh, <laughs> <laughs> help me both um, and she does many other things for me okay so then you guys open methodical yep about in February 2015 and you were sourcing your beans from other other roasters. roasters, yeah. Okay. Where it was called, it's, it's kind of common now, it's called being a multi-roaster cafe. And okay. you, you open up a shop and you're not roasting yourself. And um, being a multi-roaster, you search out the best roasters around the country or the world and you just like, you have your, your selection of coffees. And it's really cool because it helps the community experience different coffees from around the country. Mm -hmm. And it helps your, um, whoever's working with you, kind of be able to train their palate to taste different coffees from different roasters. Okay, yeah, I just did a cupping, and so I learned something about that, That's yeah, great. yeah. Cool. So then you opened this beautiful shop, and you've recently won some awards for yeah. your shop. Tell yeah, that was wild. That. So we got, um, oh man, we were nominated... The most beautiful? Most, the most beautiful the most cafe beautiful. in South Carolina. Awesome. Which is Cheers. crazy, it was wild, <laughs> and that's a lot due to... Um, to Marco because he's a design mind so he just, just the aesthetic he has the aesthetic yeah. yeah and you know he like and he was always on the digital world he's like a digital designer and developer not not so much a developer more of a designer but when we were talking about opening up the cafe it was his first like tangible like brick and mortar space to design and so well you've created a world-class world space Thanks that has lot. been recognized um, in the New York Times and uh, National Geographic featured you mm. and Architectural Digest I yeah believe. yeah so good job thanks a lot yes. so you've created the aesthetic you've created uh -huh. this this coffee yeah. and and then you got into roasting your own correct? yeah you can see wild. the methodical coffee bags behind us and they're in several local places and I'm sure you're, mm -hmm. in, you're in places beyond Greenville too. Mainly, yeah. yeah. So we, uh, it was about two years ago. So okay. I would say about a year and a half into the shop being open, we, it started to run real smooth and um, we were thinking about what's next and we decided to start roasting coffee, okay. which it was, it has been so wild. It's like just the most fun thing. It's a cool building too where you roast. Yeah, is. it's yeah. super cool. Just and I remember kinda. talking with you when you guys were just kind of getting set up and open. You mm -hmm. had a, a Euphoria event there mm -hmm. and you said you were becoming a coffee song or you were thinking about yes. doing that. Okay, yeah. it's just, it's called becoming a Q grader. Okay. And so it's like the, it's like getting your master sommelier okay. uh, except in the in the coffee industry. And so that's like over a lot of the Q grader it's it's a in order to get it, it's like it's a week-long testing evaluation. It's just like super intensive, eight hours a day for five days, and it's just like you have to train your palate to be able to taste different salts and acids and um, origins and ways of processing coffee. And you just have to decipher it based off flavor, and so it's just this really intensive thing. And I've been like cupping, cupping, tasting a lot of coffees over the over the past years in hopes to. I think in the next year I'll probably go take my test and Good. get my cue. It's called getting your cue. Getting your cue. Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of where you are now. Is there anything yeah. more you'd like to tell us about? Are there some new oh, things man. on the yeah. horizon? A lot of new things. So okay. in the next, in November, we'll open our new, our new brick and mortar shop okay. next to, um, that right next to Billiam Jeans, right on, on Stone Stones Point, where Wade Hampton and Stone Avenue um, cross. Oh, next to like Urban Digs, Urban Digs, Community Tap, Tap. 
Yeah. Okay. So there is the Dapper Ink store. It used to be the Dapper Ink yeah. store. And Dapper Ink grew out of that space. And um, we are doing a collaboration with Dapper Ink's sister company. Um, daughter company? That's funny. <laughs> I'm going to hear I want to hear about that from somebody. Yeah. Um, we don't know what to call it. <laughs> yeah. It's like Dapper Ink's other company, the Landmark Project. They're an outdoor retail company. Yeah. yeah. And we're doing a collaboration with them. It's going to be, we're going to have, obviously, our coffee, uh, teas. We're going to have milkshakes made by Jenny. We're going to have Jenny's ice cream, and we're going to make those into awesome. milkshakes. Awesome. And we're going to have a, a food program there. And the Landmark Project is going to have a lot of their... Uh, outdoor retail apparel and then a lot of other like leather goods and just like really neat uh, merchandise you can come in. Okay, get. so like a retail coffee yeah. cafe Retail experience. coffee cafe, yeah. Well, that sounds fun. It'll Great right location. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that should be open in November. So that's like, okay. that's a big one. Cool. And um, something that actually just happened today uh -oh. is Breaking we, news. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know if we've actually launched it on our own social media yet. So y'all might be the first to hear, which is cool. But we, we just launched our coffee subscription program. So okay. you, can, you can go to our website, methodicalcoffee.com. And you can go to subscriptions and just like be able to have any of our coffees just shipped to your door once every week, once every two weeks, once every right. three weeks. So that's kind of fun. That's brand new. So that yeah. just happened today. It sounds like a nice gift for the holidays. Yeah, it'd be an yeah. awesome gift for the All holidays. Right. Cool. We'll yeah. have Greenville in your cup every morning. Yeah. Subscribe to Methodical. Yeah. And thank you so much, Will. Yeah, absolutely. It was great to chat with it was you. Fun. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it and uh, if you have any questions for Will, leave them in the in the comments below. We'll we'll get to those. Look for this on YouTube and our blog at swamprabbitin.com. We love to talk with local people and hear their backstories, yeah. learn about them. So thank you so much for watching and tune in next Wednesday at noon. Bye. See ya. <laughs>